Hi Jewish mom. I hope you had an amazing Rosh Hashanah and an amazing Yom Kippur. Um, I want to share with you a sweet story from my Yom Kippur. Um, uh, my son Yoel, who's seven, is very, very close friends with his sister, uh, Sophia, who's four years old. So on Yom Kippur morning, um, then I was sitting on the sofa, doing my own thing, and, um, and the kids were, um, and Yoel was davening with Sophia. Um, and um, so Sophia was still like in her pajamas. It was really cute with like her little whatever tummy sticking up. And um, and Yo and Yo was very very with a lot of seriousness, going through all the all the davening, all the morning prayers with Sophia. And um, so then he says he, he says okay. So he would say it sort of slowly, and then Sophia would would would, would repeat after him. So she says so he says Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech Haolam Shelo Asani Goy. Who, thank you, Hashem. Uh, blessed is Hashem, who didn't make me a non-Jew, right? Said Sophia says, "Shelo asani goy," and then she says, "He says, Baruch atah Hashem, okay, machalam, shelo asani eved, who didn't make me a slave." So Sophia says, "Shelo asani eved." Okay, then, then he turns to Sophia, with a very serious expression, and says to her, and says, um, "Okay, now Sophia, now I'm going to say, blessed are you, Hashem, shelo asani isha." who didn't make me a woman, because I have more mitzvot than you do. So I thank Hashem that I have more mitzvot than you are, because I'm a boy. She says, he says, and now you're going to say, Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu Melchalem, Shelo Asani Kirtzono, who did not make me in accordance with his will. Okay, so it's a little bit of a complicated, funny story. <laughs> it's a cute story if you know the Hebrew, um, because... Everything that everything that he said is in the negative, like shelo sani goya, shelo sani eve, shelo sani isha, um, and the woman's the woman's blessing that she always says for herself is shelo sani kirtzono, who makes uh, thank you Hashem, blessed you Hashem, uh, who made me who made me in accordance with His will. Um, but Yo was confused because everything's always negative, so he said, "Who did not make us? Who did not make me in accordance with His will?" And I thought that was a really cute story, and I've been sharing it with <laughs> a lot of people over the last few days, but. Afterwards, I was just thinking, like, uh, you know, how many of us feel that way? How many of us feel shelo asani kirtzono? And I think, like, especially maybe like with the chagim coming up, like a lot of us are feeling like, you know, I'm not a good, you know, I'm not a good enough wife. I'm not a good enough mother. I'm not a good enough, you know, cook. I'm not a good enough um, at anything. I'm not a good enough community member. I'm not a good good enough Jew. I'm not a good enough. Shalom um, Asani Kirsano, that I have not been made in accordance with Hashem's will. Um, and I just want to share something very beautiful that I read last week in Family First magazine. Uh, the editor, Basi Gruen, so she was sharing that, um, that, the, uh, that, that, that when she was in seminary, so she had a teacher who every year before the Yamim Noraim, like before the holidays, he would, say, he, would, he would ask the girls to visualize their lives without. Hashem, a Hashem-less life. Um, and uh, so I decided I would do this, um, to imagine my life without Hashem. And I was just so blown away by just what a depressing life that is, <laughs> a life without Shabbat, a life without Chagim, a life without now like running and making the sukkah. Um, a life without, you know, raising the Jewish children and davening and emunah and faith in Hashem and, um, you know, uh, even mikvah and all like the all the wonderful aspects, like all the holiness of like a Jewish of like a Jewish home and you know seeing Hashem in my life and all the different things that happen and um, and um, and I mean the truth is I don't have to and my imagination doesn't have to work so hard because I used to live like that. I became religious when I was around tw when I think I was 20, 21 years old. Um, so I lived like that. I know what that was like. I know how excruciatingly <laughs> empty and depressing that life is. Um, so um, I think it's just, you know, and all of us Jewish moms, even if you're not like, you know, the person, even if, even if you're not the most spiritually minded person, I think for most of us, like the, you know, for most of us, like sort of like the minimum, the bare minimum of being a religious, of being a religious Jewish mom, you know, is not like it's, it's, it's quite it's quite a handful. It's quite an impressive amount of Hashemness of Hashem in our lives. You know, just keeping Shabbat and keeping kosher, and keeping the holidays, and raising Jewish children, and raising them to keep the traditions, and um, and just uh, you know, to what an extent, asan shasani kirtzano, like just to what an extent, uh, just by doing, just by being 
religious Jews at the end of, you know, at the end of history, um, how much nachat we're giving Hashem, and how much, to what an extent, to what an incredible extent, a sunny kirtz know that we are made in accordance with Hashem's will. So I just want to bless all future Shemans, you should remember that. So that's coming up. Um, I think you're probably not going to be hearing much from me over the next week and a half or so, um, until after Sukkot. Um, but um, yeah, I want to bless you. They should all remember that. All remember that. Shetzani Kretzano. Shetzani Kretzano. And it's really, really true. I want to bless all of you, Jewish moms, with an amazing week, an amazing month, an amazing year, uh, an amazing hug. Tell it to